Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Draculic and today I would like to say you a few words about the concept of uh, Blender data blocks. So what are really those data blocks? You can think of data blocks as being containers or uh, channels of some sort and all the properties of an object can be split and can be divided into those layers or channels or containers. And let me add a simple primitive so I can show you more, more clearly what I want to show you. So I'm adding a U sphere here. You can see this is a primitive. You can adjust some basic parameters by this panel over here. And then you can see that over here in the outline panel, an object named sphere has been added. This is purely conventional. This is just a label given by, the, by Blender to this object. And if I click on this little plus icon over here, you can see we have a hierarchy here. We have another sphere name just underneath the sphere, uh, the top sphere name. What is the difference between this sphere and this sphere underneath? Well, this sphere has to do with the object sphere, meaning that it holds information that has to do with the rotation, location, and scale of my sphere. Whereas this sphere over here, this label sphere, has to do with the mesh of the sphere, with the shape of my object. And I can change uh, the mesh of my object, all right, as you can see, and this name will not change because this is just a label. Those two are two distinct data blocks. If I go ahead now and add a material to my object, let's say I'm going here to the material panel, new material, you can see now that if I click on this little plus icon, the hierarchy has been extended and now it contains also a material data block. So uh, every object has different levels and each one of those levels contains different parts of the properties that make the object. So we have a top level, which is the object level, that contains the information that has to do with the location, rotation and scale. So, and I want first to switch from down here, from the global coordinate system to the local one, so I can show you more clearly what I'm talking you about. So, the difference between the global by the way, and the local coordination system is that the global is the global coordination system is attached to the uh, to the coordinates of the 3D world, meaning that the z-axis is heading always up. So if I rotate my object, you can see that still the z-axis is heading up because it is fixed to the 3D uh, world uh, coordinate system. Whereas if I am in the local coordinate system and I'm rotating my and I rotate my my sphere you can see that the axis now has been rotated as well because those axes are the local axes that are attached to the uh, to my object to my sphere but the important thing for you to know here is that this name this label sphere has to do with the object level and you can access the object level by clicking on this little tube icon here for every object. So you can see the object sphere and we have a panel, a transform panel with the location, the rotation and so on of our object. So this is all what this object level contains. Let's get now into the sub-object level which is labeled against sphere. And this sub-object level you can access it by clicking on this little triangle button here. So this triangle button has everything has to do with the mesh, with the shape of our object. So you can access it either by, by clicking tab or by clicking directly on this sphere mesh data block over here. So if I click on this mesh data block labeled sphere, I can access the sub-object level that has to do with the shape of my object. All right, now, I want to show you this. Let's select inside the, sub, the mesh data block, the sub-object level. Let me select all the vertices and delete them. Now, while in the edit mode, let me add a cube, another primitive. 
you can see that although my object has still the name sphere, now this sphere object has a mesh data block that is a cube that has the shape of a cube. Yet the name of the mesh data block itself has not changed. So what I'm trying to show you here is that those names are conventional, purely conventional, and, and they, they are just labeling our objects or our meshes. So I can now go to my mesh data block, mesh data panel from this triangle here, and I can change, if I want, the name of the mesh, not the object, the name of the mesh into something like cube. Again, this is just a label. So now I have a sphere object with a cube mesh attached to it, all right? And of course the material attached to it. So this is those, the object and the mesh object are completely independent. And uh, what is important here is that I want to animate my scene using the object level while in the object level and I want to change the shape of my object while in the uh, in the uh, mesh sub-object level or while in the inside the mesh data block okay so it is very important to, for you to know that two, two distinct objects can point at the same mesh data block and let me show you what I mean let's say that I want to duplicate my object in such a way that the second object and the original are sharing the same data block. They are pointing at the same data block. For this purpose, I'm using the shortcut Alt-D. So I'm hitting Alt-D, duplicating my cube, uh, my, my sphere object that has a cube mesh data block attached to it. So now I have two distinct objects. You can see over here in the outline panel, I have my sphere and my sphere 001. But if I click on this little plus icon on the sphere 01 object, you can see that the mesh data block has remained the same. It is the cube mesh data block. So now there's a second way for duplicating objects, which is by using the shift D shortcut. So this time the two distinct objects will not point at the same mesh data block. So let's now click shift D and duplicate my original cube creating a new object that this time has a different mesh data block attached to it. So now here in the outline you can see that I have my sphere 02 which is this object here and if I click on this little plus icon a new mesh data block has been attached to my sphere 02 object which has a mesh cube 002 this time. It's not the same with the other two. Practically when uh, I click in my original, at my, on my original object and I'm tabbing in that mode. You can do that either by hitting tab or by clicking on this mesh, any of those mesh data block over here. And I'm changing something. I make a change in the shape in the mesh data block. Then the old D duplicate updates as well. You can see the change because the, those two objects, the the sphere object in the sphere 01 are sharing, you can see here in the outline, the same mesh data block. Whereas the third object, the sphere 02, because it doesn't share the same mesh data block, doesn't change. So the important thing for you to keep in mind is that every object in, in Blender has uh, some channels of properties that are called data blocks. The top level data block always is the one that is holding the information about location, rotation, and scale, and we call this the object data block. The, the next level is the mesh data block, and the third level is the material data block. Those three channels, or more for that matter, are completely independent to each other. So we want to animate our objects, whereas in object mode, we want to change the shape of our objects while in the mesh data block mode and we want to change the material while, of course when in the material uh, inside the material data block those 
data blocks can be linked or unlinked to each other. So if I go to my third object here and I want to go to the materials panel here and let's say I click on this minus icon, you can see that now I have detached, I have unlinked the material data block from this object. So you can see how this thing works here. It's uh, like nodes of information that have, that have to do with the properties of our objects. So that concludes our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from this. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic. Hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.